So today's video is looking at one of the best games I have had in a long, long time. And it's playing in one of the tanks that I would never, ever, ever, ever guess would be the one that I have it in. Now, what tank is it? It is the M56 Scorpion, so this is the tier 7 Scorpion. No, it's not the broken tier 8 German one, this is an American tier 7 tank destroyer with pretty good camo. Let me not uh, beat around the bush, this thing, excuse my pun. Um, but this thing is just absolutely ridiculous within the game. It, it genuinely, if you get it in the right position, I'm talking about, it's not an actual broken tank, it's not overpowered, it's not one that will, will make you win every single game that you play in. But what it does offer is if you know the mechanics about spotting, you know how to position yourself in the right kind of areas, you know how to move, and that sort of thing within World of Tanks, this one will basically uh, be able to, to serve you up some crazy, crazy games, as you're about to see. So, obviously, we are playing on Abbey. The, it's kind of a hard map, I guess, for the Scorpion, because it doesn't offer too many areas I guess you can you've got to be pretty campy but you have to kind of hope that the enemy team kind of win for you to have a good game because if if they don't kind of win and then take the middle you kind of get left out of the game you can't really advance because you are a non turreted TD although you have a good gun arc the only problem is is that you are quite well you have no armor and when I mean literally when I mean no armor, I literally mean no armor. This thing gets like one millimeter of armor on the front of it, which means if anyone rams you, this could be a light tank of ram you for way more damage than you would ever deal back to them. This thing is just absolute paper. When we talk about paper tanks, this one is the epitome of paper tanks. But what it does do is have this great DPM that you can use super effectively and you can definitely try and carry games, especially when you're top tier, and even when you're in tier 9 games, if you play very passively and you wait for your opportunity, this tank can rack up damage uh, that you wouldn't have guessed it could have. I mean, I've had another gameplay in this very, very recently that I will showcase when we are a tier 9 game, where we still manage to do a really, really good job of it in the end. Now, as you see in this game, we've got 1,450 hit points, uh, of damage that is. Um, unfortunately, we only have 82, 820 hit points, which is yeah, not too many. Um, but what we can do is, you know, secure this left-hand flank. If anyone moves up, anyone be is super aggressive. If anyone basically does any of that, we're gonna outspot them because of the view range and the camo rating of this tank means that yes, this T3488 is sat there, but it doesn't matter because we have broken camo to the point where he would never spot us. He's still outside of our like detection range. He would have to have really, really, really high um, kind of camo or, or spotting crew to be able to detect us. And as you can see, the boogie or the buggy or whatever you want to call it moves up a little bit too far and we take him out. Now, T-3485, he's out of the game. Churchill 1, what's he doing? Well you're about to find out. We to put one into him, we're up to 2,700 damage already, and you see what he does is he goes behind a rock. Now, something you can learn right here, he goes undetected. What does that mean? Well, he's going to come out, isn't he? And there we go, we shut him down. Although he was undetected does not mean that we won't be able to spot him, we won't be able to deal damage. It's very, very easy if you manage to, to kind of think about that you know he's probably more than likely going to come out so we might as well shoot anyway if you don't no problem really but if you do then it's all good we try and put one into the t 3488 but we bounce what yeah crazy put another one into him very very quickly after we've then got a t67 who's deciding he's gonna come up this flank and uh, we put one into him unfortunately we get hit by the ikv there which was really really unfortunate we put we tried to put one into him but unfortunately we miss him which is actually really really bad news i tried to blind fire him there unfortunately we don't manage to and what we do now is we go towards this bush to try and outspot what i should have done right here is actually pull back behind the bush so we don't take that ikv hit 
right there that we just did. So very, very unfortunate. Another round comes in there. Um, and yeah, now we're only on 380 hit points. It's four versus three. Not a particularly great kind of scenario, especially with our heavy tank being on so little hit points and the T29 still being on about a thousand hit points as well. So, hmm, not the best game you could possibly think of. Now, because we missed the IKV, it does leave us in a bit of a, a rubbishy spot, if that makes sense, because he's going to be trying to be aggressive now. And what we're going to try and do is get into this spot over here to just detect him if he's going to come right around, if that makes sense, down the eight line. Now, obviously, our teammate spots him in just a second. And what we try and do now is actually try and turn left and go into the position just to our left to be able to get a shot on him. Now, unfortunately, he's way too far up for us to be able to get hit on, but what it does mean is we can now move into the position that we were just at, and you see that you get line of sight right the way down this line, and of course, he is facing away from us. What is he going to do here? Well, we're going to shut him down, that's what. Um, yeah, decent game so far. 3,389 damage in the M56 Scorpion is absolutely fantastic game. It could end here and we could have a fantastic one. But let's make it good. Let's make it even better. T29 is now moving. We're going to put one into him. Unfortunately, we don't actually manage to hit him. But what we will do now is go for another shot and we do hit him with that one. Now, interesting. T29 isn't getting spotted there, which is really, really annoying. So what we are going to do is we're going to relocate, we're going to move, we're going to get into another position because that's kind of what you need to do in this tank. Make sure that you surprise enemies by just putting yourself in some areas that they're never going to expect, you know. Yes, they could expect that I'm going to move away, run away, whatever you're going to say, but if I make it as hard as possible, relocate into a position, I could be in any bush with the camera rating that this tank gets and that is exactly what you want to do with the M56 Scorpion. Just a fantastic one. I guess the next gameplay kind of features uh, camo and, and making sure that you put yourself in the right bush and how to use the camo mechanics to the best of your ability a little bit better than this video but this one is all about positioning and putting yourself in the correct position just to be able to actually win or, or try to win the game. Now we put one into the GW Panther here which is really really decent that means he's a one shot now uh, we will definitely uh, be able to take him out in one shot and so we're now up to 3,814 damage in the M56 Scorpion. That is a ridiculous game. I think we're up to 8 um, destroyed now as well. So we've got a lot of <laughs> destroyed behind us. Certainly racking up a lot of the enemy team. And um, whether or not we'll get the pools medal is up to, uh, to me, I guess. Or at least me a couple hours ago. So yeah, what we're doing now is we're going to go to the base. I was thinking the archer. Don't know if he's been spotted all game. He could be camping in the base. Unlikely, but I guessed he, he would be over there. Now the one thing I'm always conscious of is of course I'm going further away from our cap circle. So if they get in the cap circle, it's going to be really, really bad. Obviously I'll then have to go and reset somehow. And uh, that could be annoying. So there we go. Someone's in the cap. One person. Obviously, there could be all three of them in the cap and then they'll win instantly right now. Unfor well, fortunately for us, there is not three of them in the cap and it's only one of them. But what we do need to do is get as far well to the cap circle as fast as possible because if they do get in the cap, we will lose. So making sure we can cover it is what you need to do now at this point. Screw everything else pretty much. Archer is only going to be able to, you know, they're going to have to land four shots on us. So if we, he's the one that we don't know where he is, it's most likely going to be the T29 and the GW Panther at this point in the cap circle. So the Archer is unlikely to be the one in the cap circle, or at least um, if he is, at least we know where the T29 and the GW Panther are. So they're not going to be anywhere in that top half of the map uh, for the most part, at least it would be very, very unlikely. Now, here you go. We use this spot here to get into the bush to kind of outspot the GW Panther there. We're going to get behind the bush. We're going to put one into the GW Panther. So that's nine enemies destroyed. We're then going to get up into this bush and I make the worst decision here possible. I thought, you know what? 
I didn't look at how many people were in the cap. The T29 hits me, and I thought I could just out-trade him. Yeah. The archer shuts us down blind, in a bush, in the cap circle, obviously, because there was two of them in the cap circle. I wasn't spotted, and when I shot, I get detected, of course. Yeah. Big misplay from me. Fantastic game from me, though, if that makes sense. 4,169 enemy, uh, well, damage. Nine enemies destroyed, which was an amazing game. You know, it could have been that pause medal if I just played it a little bit better at the end. Obviously shouldn't have fired, should have got in that bush where I uh, dealt damage to the GW Panther, just focused the T29 blind, he'd have probably not been able to do anything, would have played a little bit better there, and then I could have moved up, used my knowledge of the, the M56 Scorpion and the camo factor of the vehicle to be able to outspot the archer, and then you know he'd have had to land four shots on us uh, before he could actually take us out, so yeah. Really, really good game. Unfortunately, we don't get the win or the pools medal, but we do pick up the Radley Walters Ace Tanker Devastator Top Gun High Caliber Sniper Fire for Effect Duelist and Bruiser. So, really, really good game. Not gonna lie. Hope you did enjoy this one. We have got another gameplay here for you, uh, just to show you some more of the kind of camo mechanics and try and teach you about the camo mechanics to be able to perform better in your games when you play in your tank destroyers your light tanks or your medium tanks not particularly your heavy tanks because let's be honest you don't really want to be camping at the back in your heavy tank but let's get into it right now right so second gameplay we are here on cliff this is of course a really really nice map in terms of if you can stay at the back and you can uh, use your camo, stay undetected, you can get some shots on the people that try to go up the hill on cliff and then anyone that pushes aggressively towards the right hand side of the map uh, using the mini map at least so yeah really really good um, kind of place for us to take the tank now at the beginning I'm a little bit of a bot um, play a little bit weirdly I kind of not really paying too much attention I'm like what? I thought I was on the other side um, yeah, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to back up into the right kind of position uh, for this tank, which is of course behind as many bushes and as far away from the opponents as possible, because yet again, you've got no armour, literally no armour, and uh, very unlikely that you'll bounce anything, and certainly don't want to get hit by a T-49 uh, as we back up there right into the ridge, which was a bit annoying, but okay. Uh, first one into the T-49, no way he will spot me unless he has godlike um, accuracy. Put another one into the light tank that's trying to get up the hill. Now what we do is we use our knowledge of the physics system to be able to get up onto this higher perch up here, which allows us to get some better angle on the people on top of the hill. And also we can put some of these like bushes in the way, I guess, uh, to be able to have some better games. Now, I'm a bit lazy in this game. Uh, was auto-aiming that guy and uh, of course we miss when we auto-aim because it's centre of mass and of course it's just his turret showing and um, we're getting a bit unlucky with the accuracy here they're all going all over the place which is obviously not ideal when you're trying to snipe uh, the turret of a T-49 so what I try here I'm just continuing to be a bot in this game at least for the beginning um, until we decide to actually make a move and do something um, because we we should probably start doing something in uh, in a little bit is um, we're just trying to get as much damage out as possible of course here you see the Korean pattern as we put one into him and you'll see him later on um, yeah what we're doing now obviously help out our teammates as much as possible as we bounce off of a T49 what on earth just happened there what we will do though is shut him down finally um, with that last shot now we try and get one on the T32, but we don't reload in time, which is super annoying. Um, but you can see the camo factor in this vehicle. This T32 is well within uh, the 400 meters view range kind of limit, uh, or 440 meters view range. And so, yeah, we're still undetected within this game, which means we can try and put out some damage as and when we need to. And of course, we pick up another damaging hit on the T32, and this kind of shows you how using the bushes, putting them in between you and the opponents will allow you to reduce the camo or increase the camo factor of your vehicle 
and especially if you've got the camo perks on your vehicle which you will want to have in a TD like this in any of your paper TDs looking at the Borsig you know all of those kind of vehicles you need the camo factor on it now I think oh right we've won the game of course now it's time to actually go and I do try and actually get up onto the next stage but I miss it horrifically of course and yet again me being an absolute bot on the game again um, but yeah it's time to actually move towards the opponents in a second um, at least that's what I'm hoping to do now we've been messing around for far too long let's actually get forward and, and start doing something within the game let's actually really nail down the opponents will we'll be absolutely insane and yeah we got spotted what did we get spotted by oh oh no oh no it's a oh oh it's a t54 e1 and he's just taken the majority of our hit points <laughs> in two shots and don't worry this is a common feature when you play in something like the m56 scorpion as soon as you get spotted that is pretty much all your hit points gone because of course no one's bouncing off of you and also people know how to fire high explosive one thing that I do want to note here, this is the kind of play that you should be doing when you have a situation like that. Yes, I could advance, but what use am I going to be if someone kind of pokes whilst we're moving? I can't really hit on the move. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just reposition myself slightly so that we've got a little bit of bush in between us and the opponents, which means that they're not going to spot us and uh, we can kind of remain undetected, or at least that's my hope within this game. Now... T29, Korean pattern, what are we going to do? Will we put one into the Korean pattern there, leaving him on 469 hit points? Of course we've got a light tank on top of the hill who is playing kind of aggressively. Well, not aggressively, but he's he's up there, he's a one shot. And of course if the pattern YOLOs him, that's not going to be good for him at all. It, luckily, our light tank puts one into the T54E1, which is really, really good. And then he gets shut down by the M5355, the most broken artillery in the game. We only track the M46 Korean pattern, which is uh, a big mistake from us. We then put one straight into him, leaving him on 43 hit points. And we try and snipe his Capola, but we don't get lucky there. And um, now we're going to try and blind fire him. Right. So he's probably moved now. Unlikely he's going to continue to be there. Uh, so what we are going to now just do is just wait and wait and wait. And sometimes this is kind of something that people in World of Tanks kind of forget. Sometimes you do actually have to just sit there and wait. Because if you don't, what happens is, you know, you, you be aggressive in a tank like this against tier 9s and tier 8s. They're going to have good view range. When you're on the move, it negates the good factor of the Scorpion because, of course, you rely on your undetectability. And if you get detected, well, you're not particularly a very mobile or you something that you can utilize very well whilst on the move because, yeah, you don't have a turret. You're not particularly that great at turning. And so if you put it in the wrong position, of course, you're going to have bad games. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to sit, we're going to wait and um, wait for the opponent to make a mistake. Now, there's two TDs on our team, and they're going to be carrying that left-hand flank for us because, of course, we are in his Tier 7. What am I going to do against some of the Tier 9s in the game, uh, especially if I'm trying to be the aggressor? So what I'm going to do is just wait and wait for my moment to actually make the move and do something and push and, of course, the Borsig on the enemy team made a big mistake and got spotted by our J Panther 2 and our Bors or Waffle Panzer 4, I believe it was, uh, and so he got shut down very, very quickly by them. We're just waiting now. Of course, it seems very campy, but this is how I knew I could kind of help out the team the most, how I could basically um, make it easier for our team to, to have a better game. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to move up, I'm going to try and spot the cap circle. There are two vehicles in there, it could be the pattern, um, we don't know for sure, but it's likely to be the pattern. Uh, and the T29, we don't know if that's the case, but what we will do is use the bush mechanics here. What you'll notice is when the bush goes visible in the sniper mode, which it is right now, that means that basically um, you won't get spotted or it makes it super super hard to get spotted it basically makes it 
undetectable if you fire so it negates the effect of firing on your camo factor which is the big kind of thing that you'll notice if you are undetected and um, you ever fire and then you're like oh suddenly I got spotted well that's because when you fire it reduces your camo factor and hence why you got spotted now we're, we're kind of negating that and as we do that the M46 Korean pattern gets spotted we pre-aim where he's going to be and we put one into him and even then we didn't even get spotted by the Korean pattern now Charitia left on a couple hundred hit points what are we going to do at this point well we're going to take the long way round most people will just go round that corner try and put a shot into him and then ultimately probably get taken out what we're going to do instead is actually go the long way round put as many bushes in between us and him as possible we're then going to line up a load of bushes so we can go in between the bushes as we move up and then hopefully outspot him now we don't spot him from here he's got out of the cap as well but what i am expecting him, him to have done is actually get right into the corner of near the cap circle right there so yeah there he is we're gonna get behind the bush put as much room in between us and the bush uh, and then we're gonna put one into him charity is now a one shot for us and we will finish him off there with the final shot fantastic fantastic play right there leaves us just two versus the artillery if we don't play this absolutely silly we will win the game very easily so it's just a case of one of us needs to spot and the other person just needs to be ready to shut him down and of course since i am the lower tier that cannot one shot the artillery it's probably my kind of job to actually uh, spot him and so you'll see that in just a second now artillery tend to have good camo because they have the camo perks they have the binoculars that they can use and also um, they can well not binoculars but the camo net that you can put on your tank and vision range coated optics or advanced optics um, which means that you know sometimes we'll actually get out spotted or we'll trade and of course when you're in a tank like this artillery doesn't tend to move which means that if you don't spot them outright where you're moving it kind of makes it very hard for you to spot them because obviously when I'm on the move I don't get as good camo and so the artillery is stationary so our camos kind of work out uh, to be approximately the same so when I spot the artillery they'll probably spot me because they're stationary I'm moving that's kind of how it works uh, or at least for a tank like this of course if you're in a heavy tank you'll pretty much get spotted and then you won't even spot them so yeah think about that when you're playing in your tank classes use that knowledge of the spotting mechanics within the game which hopefully this video has kind of showcased a little bit I don't know if it has um, or if I've explained it well enough but I have done a video on it before uh, to try and to try and kind of guide you guys but hopefully this one's also kind of adding to it now what you see here is of course I know that the artillery is probably going to be back there there's just a lot of bushes in the way between me and the artillery so what I am going to do now is just move up aggressively I'm going to then take this shot right down here after we've spotted him and now he can't hit us but the our waffle is never going to get spotted by the artillery we wait for him to put one shell into him don't know how we didn't manage to just one shot him considering yeah he only did 200 damage to him very very strange we start lagging out which is of course not what you're wanting in your game and the waffle shuts him down right at the end of the game leaving us with a victory in a case where i thought oh god it's a tier 9 game on cliff i'm never gonna have a good game we managed to pick up 1700 base xp 2300 damage four enemies destroyed of which all of them were higher tier i believe and yeah really really good game 512 assistants hope you guys enjoyed this video remember if you did to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this where we run through a lot of the gameplay and, and a lot of the clips to help you try and get better if you're interested in that or if you just want to see a good game of course there's plenty of update news on this channel as well that you can have a look at and the videos will be on screen right now other than that i hope you have a great rest of your day and i hope to see you in the next video Goodbye.